Good evening, everyone. Curry College Chief of the Forecaster Joe Shockett taking a look at the hurricane season forecast here. And here's the current SST anomalies. And let me tell you, for this map and a couple other maps, I'm going to have a heck of a hard time finding a color that's going to work here with this map. Let's try this purple. So here are the current SSTs as of today. Again, you can see here the El Nino that's trying to come on, the warm water stacked along the east coast, the MDR is slightly cooler than normal but we're starting to warm here off of Africa and then the main MDR at or slightly below normal. Some warming now taking place south of Alaska. The, PD, the uh, Pacific here is cool. It is warm here. And this drought in Florida is, I think, going to get under control because the water should warm up here and it will start raining again, hopefully, in the state of Florida because it really is quite bad there. And also, take a look here in Western Australia. All this cool water west of the continent of Australia. So that is a uh, interesting sign. So again, there's a lot of interesting things going on in the ocean as of today, as of the 21st of April. So let's take a look at what's going to happen on down the road with this whole configuration and this quote-unquote, I guess you want to say, El Nino or Madoki El Nino or neutral phase if we even get to the El Nino. And again, here's just another close-up of the Atlantic Basin. You can see warm water here stacked along the East Coast. The Gulf of Mexico is warm. It's trying to warm, around, warm up around Florida, which will be good for the drought. Get some rain in there. And again, warming up off of Africa, which will hopefully, maybe at some point, I don't know, cut down some of the dust coming off the continent of Africa. And, you know, maybe we could start ripening this area up for the earlier part of the season, just in case the El Nino does kick on and it, things get cut back. But... Regardless, here's the uh, CFS forecast SSTs for the month of June, the first official month of the hurricane season forecast. And this is, you know, pretty interesting. So you can see the El Nino here. Let me grab this here, do some annotation. The El Nino is not really coming on here, is it? Cooler than normal. That's almost like a La Nina phase. Meanwhile, here off the um, west coast of Africa and the MDR, it is warm which is a good thing you want to see. Cool here in the Central Atlantic and warm here in the Northern Atlantic. So that's a pretty interesting thing. And then obviously here again, warm here off the West Coast and still some slightly cooler water here west of Australia. So there's the month of June uh, temp uh, sea surface temperature anomalies wise. So again, that's a very interesting look to the early side of the season. Again, we've already had one tropical, not, yeah, I guess tropical, yeah, tropical summer Lena. Uh, yes, they really didn't get a lot of tension developed way up here, and a lot of people are skeptical, including me. Was that really a tropical storm? But regardless, we already have one name in the books, and the month of June here looks favorable for maybe even more storm development, given if this whole pattern in the ocean is correct. Here we are, the month of July. Again, pretty similar to what we saw in the potentially what we're going to see in the month of June. Warm here in the MDR, the main development region. Slightly cooler here in the Central Atlantic, warm in the north. Here's the El Nino that's not really coming on. Again, maybe a neutral phase here. And then warm here off the west coast. And then again, some cooler water here west of Australia. So again, this is a very, very interesting sign. Again, again, the hurricane season forecast, just like the summer forecast, is really a 50-50 shot, really a flip of a coin here of what could actually happen. Again, it's going to really, really be dependent on what this El Nino actually looks like as we get into the heart of the hurricane season. There is really no way to tell exactly what all the SSTs are going to look like that will impact, obviously, the Atlantic Basin and obviously the Eastern Pacific. So we'll really just have to see what that El Nino looks like and if it comes on at all. Here's the month of August. Now, this is really, really a shift, if you will. Look at this. Now you are talking about what could be a decent El Nino going on with the warm water here off the west coast, still getting some cool water here west of Australia, and a very warm, really, Atlantic entirely. So this could be an interesting sign if this comes true in the month of August. What of the impacts could be if the El Nino comes on and the Atlantic is in this kind of a SST configuration? Could you see a very active August in the Pacific and in the Atlantic? We just don't know. Again, it's just too far away, but that is a very, very interesting look there from the CFS for the month of August as we start getting into the heat of the hurricane season, which peaks on September 10th. 
Here is the SSTs for September, pretty similar to August. Again, warm, warm, so maybe it will be one of these years where both basins are still crank. Well, like both of these basins, the Pacific and the Atlantic will be cranking out storms one by one, or one of them will dominate whether this could be an Atlantic year or a Pacific year. Again, it's just too far away, but that's a very, very interesting look for an El Nino pattern regarding tropical storm development in the longer term. So that is a interesting, interesting look to say the least. And October, not ch no change from September and August and July. Not really. You can see the uh, the warmth water really globally. I mean, that's insane. Not just in our part of the world, but really the entire globe potentially, SST-wise, could be on fire. So again, a very, very interesting, you know, six to eight months coming up here with the hurricane season coming on. And the summer forecast temperatures in the part in this part of the United States and there's a close up of that as well and there's the averages over the next three months and maybe the El Nino comes on late and we have a active early first half and then a quieter second half I mean anything is really on the table at this point so that is the last image I have of SSTs now you've been very good so let me just pull this up here here is my 2017 Atlanta hurricane season forecast with all this data combined, you know, all these possibilities all boiled down to one particular, if you will, thing. So here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, 9 to 12 name storms, I'm thinking, total. 4 to 6 of these will become hurricanes. And 2 to 3 of these will become major hurricanes, which are Category 3 up to Category 5. And I issued this forecast back on March 18th of 2017 on Facebook and on Twitter. So this forecast now has been out for about a month and there will be some more revisions as we work our way into the month of May. But this is a rough idea of currently, given all these current forecasts in the Atlantic and Pacific, how the Atlantic should turn out by the end of the season. So again, there will be changes as we get a little bit closer in the month of May. But that's it for now and thank you for watching.